Hey guys, my name is Jamie. I am a double diamond in the company. Um, if you haven't, invite your team, please. If not, this should be recorded. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a single mom of four. Um, I joined this company four years ago, actually, in total. Um, I left for a little while after year three and then came back within the last year. Um, and basically the reason why i started it works was four years ago when the pandemic hit i ended up with a tumor in my neck that i had to have taken out i ended up with them having to break three bones in my necks and take the tumor out i became permanently paralyzed in my upper left bicep with total numbness down my left side from it um, a lot of people look at me on the outside they have no idea that i have a disability um it's definitely a silent disability those are real guys so believe somebody when they say that they have one um because even though i can move my arm halfway up i can't lift it up above my head i can throw it up but it doesn't stay up um a lot of people don't realize that i walk with a slight limp it's really hard to see unless i walk a long distance um but when this all happened Knowing that I could have become paralyzed from the neck down, I was blessed for for that, for one, that I didn't lose my life. But at that time, I was on short-term disability with my work and coming out of surgery, knowing that I'd have more a more a harder time doing things and the requirements that my my doctor had put on my employer at that time, they weren't able to accommodate. So they ended up firing me. Um, the first, the girl who offered me the opportunity in this, in this business, I turned her down the first time I actually started on the products, love the products. Cause I gained over 80 pounds. I was over 300 pounds, um, after surgery. Um, the doctors don't know why I gained so much weight. Um, still to this day, they have no idea, but then I started on the products. I did tell her, yes, I would buy the products. I would try those out. I love them. I lost over 40 pounds in 90 days on our products back then. It it was TFX gummies and the cleanse. I loved the products, um, but I turned her down for the opportunity. But when I lost my job, being a single mom, I was already like falling behind on bills. I was negative in two bank accounts at this point. And when I found out that they fired me because they couldn't accommodate my disability, I was like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I literally prayed about it that night. And I was like, God, give me a sign. Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how we're gonna pay our bills. Um, Cause I don't get extra help outside of the house. And the next day she came back and offered me the opportunity guys. And I took it as my sailing boat that God was giving me. But I told her, I was like, you know what? I don't have the money to join though. So she gave me my opportunity. She gave me my options. I could use a credit card, which I didn't have that option. Ask family or friends for money. Didn't have that option. Sell things online. Guess what I did back then? It was $200 to join. I sold whatever I could in my home that I didn't need, or I could buy again for me and my kids to join this business. In one day, I was able to sell $200 worth of stuff on Facebook Marketplace to join this company, and it changed our lives forever, and it's been a godsend ever since. So that's how I joined It Works four years ago. I, and uh, within my first week, I had enough money for us to pay our rent. Within our first month, I ranked up to uh, Ruby, and then the second month, Emerald, and then I sat at Emerald until for about three years. And it was a godsend. I was making a very high paying Emerald check this entire time, but my mindset wasn't right, guys. And that's why I took a break, got my mind right, and then I came back. And we did it in seven weeks. I was able to go diamond this time around. If you, if anybody could tell you that your self-development and your mindset isn't key, it is to this business. So this is what we're going to talk about today is overcoming obstacles, because I can tell you over everybody has some type of challenges or obstacles that we have faced during this job um and our business is filled with opportunities like any worthwhile endeavor it comes with us with challenges with these challenges come great strength determination leadership and self-growth I want to talk about how we can overcome these obstacles and turn them into our stepping stones towards success. 
The first way we want to do this is with embracing the learning curve as newbies. Our newbies or anybody that's new to the It Works, welcome. We're happy to have you and I'm excited to, to train you a little bit today. One of the hurdles that we find when we first join this in industry is that you know, the learning curve of doing something new. We're not used to doing the the things that we like messaging, post to post, things like that, and doing things that get us overwhelmed. Um, we learn new skills and new knowledge. We're and it's required to remember, it's required for us to remember every um step of this is basically we were beginners just like you. Just remember, don't don't um forget that we were there we were in your spot and we're here to help you through every step of this um seek out training attend zooms with your team leaders and never hesitate to ask for help continuous learning is the foundation of our growth we have all begun we all began in your spot and no question is a dumb question and i tell that to all my newbies please don't feel dumb asking me a question i have a newbie right now who doesn't know how to screenshot We've been having to teach her that, and I'm even trying to learn because I don't have an Android phone. So if anybody has an Android phone and you can tell me how to screenshot, if it's exactly like iPhone, please message me because <laughs> we're trying to get her to do that. Like, it's just a learning curve for all of us. And I love learning new things every single day. So don't ever think that a, that your question is dumb because you might not be the only one that needs that question answered. Uh, the second way is to overcome rejection, re overcome rejection with resilience. Rejection is a common experience in our industry. It's important to understand that it, rejection is not a re reflection of your worth or your potential. Instead, view it as a stepping stone. Each no is getting you one step closer to the yes. Develop resilience by focusing on your long-term goals and maintaining a positive mindset. Remember, consistency is key. Self-development, you might say, like, what? That's not an income-producing thing. Well, let me tell you, you're wrong if you think that. It's certainly not as easy as it sounds. Everyone here is unique, and in each their right, we all have unique thing, new, unique ways that we need to grow our mindset. And so with that, with growing our mindset and self-development and personal development, we want to look into each person and see what they might be needing or what they need to focus on. That might be incre increasing your self-awareness, increasing your self-esteem, increasing your skills, fulfilling your goals. When it comes to self-development, our goals can fall into five different categories. So the first one can be mental. The second one can be social. The third one can be spiritual. The fourth one can be emotional. And the fifth one can be physical. Now I'm going to go into each one of these. With mental, you could be mentally turning, like making yourself self-sabotage. I did this a lot in the beginning of my business that I realized now that I had such a negative mindset. I was always like, oh, this person never wants to order or I'm not going to get this sale today. And then the more that you keep on saying this or the more that you think this in your brain, I, it is crazy, but it will happen. So we need to switch our mindset and we need to dive into coaching, learning and growth opportunities such as podcasts. You should be listening to positive podcasts. You should listen to growth or coaching podcasts. Uh, I love listening to Greg Grishel or um, I'm trying to think, uh, Jay Shetty in the beginning. I loved listening to Jay Shetty. He has amazing podcasts. There's lots of them out there. I'm not a big reader, but the, you can also dive into books. Um, I did read um, a few of them. I have a couple books. So I can't think now because I have ADHD. So now's the time my meds start falling, guys. So don't mind me. <laughs> um. But yes, we want to dive into books, podcasts, if you have to watch videos, if you need to be around other leaders that talk better for you, that don't talk negative, um, that help boost your self-esteem. The second one, social. This is the most important thing that we're going to be diving into right now is green carpet, guys. Why do you think that they have us having these conferences? 
we have green carpet and then we have a conference in April usually. This is so that way you can attend and be around other leaders. You can learn from other major leaders in the business. You can um, build your relationships. You can problem solve. You can learn and see what other leaders are doing in the industry. You can grow in your social well-being and your social self-development by being around others, seeing what others do. Maybe something isn't working that you're doing that somebody else might be able to do. Uh, Mandy's great at this. I love watching her TikToks and her reels and, and she puts up stuff that I would have never thought to put up. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to screenshot this and I'm going to learn this from her. Being in person with her is even better, guys, because then we can show each other, oh, this is what I send or this is how I talk or you can literally listen to somebody. So these conferences are so, so important. I can tell you when I came in last August, actually, me and Chelsea uh basically just sat there and said are you ready to go on a run and I was like hell yeah let's do this and that's how I got to diamond was because I was there I was at green carpet I had just signed back up and literally within one week I was like yeah let's go we're going on a run I understand and we got to work there at green carpet we got to talk to our leaders and got to talk to our girls on the team and I just it was crazy it was just it's exciting to be in these other um, social aspects with leaders, guys. Uh, spirituality, whether you might be religious or not religious, when that comes down to it, you might, I hope, I've seen women in this industry where they have to read their Bible or they go through their Bible in the morning and that's their self-development. I've seen others that aren't religious that they want to learn more about their self-values and what values that they, they, hold in what they want to be better in in their values and then they start diving into self-development that way um, emotional is understanding your feelings understanding why we get upset why we talk say negative talk to ourselves when we get a no or if we think that somebody isn't going to order later on and why we're feeling that way or why we feel like we can't message somebody because we're afraid that they're going to say no. When we prejudge people, we don't want to do that, right? So we got to think, why are we feeling that way? Is that about us or is that about them? Do we really know what they're going to say? No, we don't, right? And then physical, that might be you need to dive into your nutrition, your sleep, exercise, movement throughout the day. Movement is key, guys. I have ADHD and I love our products, but movement helps it helps our cortisol levels it raises our um endorphins in our brain and things like that and so movement nutrition sleep we all need sleep guys if you don't have sleep you're not going to be able to talk to people on a daily basis like we do so mindset is key and it's a pivotal role in overcoming our obstacles cultivating positive attitudes and surrounding ourselves with supportive individuals celebrating our small wins now, the, the next way that we do this and we overcome our obstacles is by building strong relationships. Our industry is all about building relationships. Um, we need to take the time to understand our, our prospects, our customers, their needs, offer genuine solutions to their problems. We've got it, guys. Our products work if they do it correctly. Now, we just can't stick them in whatever they want. That's why I love asking them, what, what do you feel is your most important issue? Gut health, brain health, losing weight. And with weight loss, it, there's a lot involved with weight loss, guys. There's so many women out there and guys, men that want to lose weight, but they might have PCOS. They might have other disorders out there that we might not know about unless we ask about it. And we need to be asking. We're building that relationship when we do. and we're building the trust. And that's how we build rapport that is essential for people. And people are more likely to join our business and to join us as customers um, when we build that rapport in your network and they'll buy our products and they'll feel valued at the same time if we do this and they'll become our strongest allies. This is why when I bring anybody into my industry and into my business as well, I like to sit, get on Zoom with them. I like to get to know them. Are they a mom? Are they a wife? 
Are they single? Are they married? Are they a pet mom? What what are their goals? How much money do they want to make? Are they only here for a couple hundred and more of the relationship and the friendships that we get out of this industry? Or do they want to make a couple thousand dollars? Are they ready to run with us? Are they ready to build their business? Are they ready to be a business builder? Uh, owner and things like that. So making sure that we're building those strong relationships in this industry as well. Um, the next one is mastering our time management. Now, I never was good at this until I came back into this. I started it about two and a half years ago and got really good at this because I was horrible at time management. Um, balancing this job with others respond with other responsibilities can be challenging effective time management is crucial prioritize your tasks set realistic goals each day create a schedule and allow you to and it will allow you to stay consistent uh, I have what's called our time blocking or time scheduling board like I created a whole board for this for my team um, I got really good at this especially because I work full time from home I was able to do this ever since um, I lost my job. But there are women on my team. I have one that works three jobs and does this on the side. And she still manages to have the time to do this. We all have 24 hours in a day, but we, I mean, put a one in the chat if you've ever heard, I don't have time to do, do this. I don't have time to be in your industry. Let me tell you, that is a lie. We all have 24 hours in a day, guys. Every single one of us, the time doesn't change for us. It's how we prioritize that time and we use it to help others. Now, I'll sit down if one of my, I had one of my girls offer, say, hey, you know, I'm really failing in my time management skills. I don't, I always just feel like I don't have enough time for this. And the first thing I said was, send me your schedule for this week. I want to see what your schedule is. And usually I'll get like a basic Monday, take kids to school, and it doesn't give like an exact time frame of when they do that. It doesn't give a time frame of when they're waking up. And this is what I help them do. This is what time blocking or time scheduling is all about. So for you people that work multiple schedules, or you have a busy schedule with your kids. I have four kids, guys. I have a teenager that is about to start football. I have a 13-year-old that is, wants to start cheerleading. Then my younger two want to be in basketball. Like I feel like I'm running all over the place and I'm in the car 24-7 half the time. Um, or I'm at doctor's visits, therapy, things like that. So you've got a schedule. So like what I like to do is I take my Sundays off. Those are my time with my family. But while I'm with my family, I also create content. I batch my content and I schedule out my next week ahead of time. I'm writing down every single thing. Where, what time am I waking up? From what time am I waking up to waking up my kids? getting them to school? What am I doing in between schools? Same thing can happen with your jobs, guys. Your job's pretty detailed. They should have a detailed schedule. If you work nine to five, usually most jobs have to have two 15-minute breaks and a half an hour lunch. Sometimes that can differ, but you know exactly when you normally get your lunches, get your breaks. And what I tell my girls is, in those breaks, if you have 15 minutes, take five minutes of that break, and I want you to send out as many messages as possible for host to post. Five minutes, set a timer on your phone. Go sit down on your break, five minutes, host to post. Guess what? That's a win for the day. I don't care if it's small. We're not always going to get our entire task list done. It's all about the small wins that we get throughout our day. Can we get up the income producing stuff, post to post. So are we, are we making sure before we, we leave the door that we are posting on our page about the business, the products, or something about our life? Are we posting in our stories? Nowadays, if you're switching your accounts, guys, from Facebook, Instagram, if you change it to a professional account or a creator account, you can actually schedule these things. It takes so, oh my gosh, it changed my life when you could schedule. You can schedule reels now on Instagram if you didn't know, but you have to have a professional account to do this. So you're able to even schedule a week out 
two weeks out if you need. So if you batch all your content on Sundays, you could be scheduling all your posts. Guess what? You just saved yourself 10 times the effort and the and the time that you need throughout the week to be with your kids or do the things that you need to do for you and your family. It is a game changer, Taylor. It totally is. Um, same thing with TikToks. I batch my content and my TikToks um, because I lost my Facebook page. <laughs> I completely lost it, guys. I got blocked. I kept on getting people banning my account. Um, and I have some of my girls getting their accounts banned. So um, I lost over 2,000 people, had to start fresh on a brand new account. But that didn't stop me because I knew what my why was. My why was supporting my kids, paying for Christmas, getting us that new house. I had never thought I'd be able to buy a home, but now I'm looking at those, that, that's my bigger goal. I wanna own my own home. I've rented this house for 13 years. I'm sick of paying somebody else's mortgage, guys. I'm here about my kids and so I can't stop. What's your why? Why are you doing this? What are you doing this for? Are you doing it for you? Are you doing it for your family? What? What is it? get down and dirty with your why. I want you to sit down after this Zoom and I want you to write down, what is my why? And I want you to really think about it. Is it for that motorhome? Now, okay, great. You want a motorhome? What kind of motorhome? How much is your motorhome? What does your motorhome look like? Until you know those things, you're not getting down and dirty with it. I know what my house looks like. I know what I want in my home. I want I want clean living. I want a pool. I want to live close to the ocean. I'm really getting detailed with it now. And this is what pushes me to keep going every day. Because even if you lose your Facebook like I did, you got to keep going for the those whys. You got to keep pushing and there's other ways to pivot. Um, we got to stay adaptable and open to change. We got to embrace change as an opportunity for growth. Stay adaptable and open to new strategies like host to post. Stay ahead of industry leading po um, position yourself as a leader or an innovator. I always say do five before me. So when I say this is basically like as you're getting better with your your business and you're not brand new and you're looking for help, look for five resources before you go to your leader. Leaders are very busy as well. And so try and find other resources, guys. There's so many resources out there. There's YouTube channels. I dove into Stephanie and Joel's before I was even on their team. I was on a different team and I watched their YouTube channel day in and day out until I learned some things that I didn't know. There are our Facebook group pages. Go into and click on files or photos, and there's tons of information in there that from years past, especially under the done page. Um, you can go to a sideline sister or brother and ask them for help and see if they might know the answer or have the wording that you might need or be looking for. Um, and if all else fails, go ahead and go ask your leader. We're always here to help. But at the same time, we also want to be those people that go out and we learn because there's so many more opportunities for us to grow in leadership. Um, don't be afraid of all the setbacks. We all go through life events that can hold us back because we let them. In the military, there's a saying that I like and I was raised with that basically says embrace the suck. This is, it means to be consistent, consistently accept the and or appreciate something that is extremely unpleasant, but unavoidable. So basically, before we watch this video that I'm going to share with you guys, um, just to give you a little bit of lowdown, when I say don't be afraid of the setbacks. We all go through challenging times in this industry, whether that be we're sick, we are down for the count, we have a family issue, we have a car breakdown. Um, I remember my first year, <laughs> right before Christmas, my car engine shot. I had to come up with money to buy a brand new car and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I got down on myself and I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then my business started failing. 
And then I had to pull myself out and figure it out. And guess what? I had, I ended up bringing my business back and being able to buy my next, my vehicle I drive now. Um, lately, I'll tell you, I've been through this industry. I've been through two elbow surgeries. I've been through colon cancer surgery. And I recently, three months ago, just had a lymph node cancer removed out of my right pelvic region. Um, lately, I have been dealing with a lot of health is issues myself. I actually took an AB ibuprofen to do this Zoom because normally I'm laying on the couch. My days have consisted in this last month of laying flat on my back and working from my phone, laying down, because every time I get up, I get dizzy. I've lost my eyesight twice, completely gone blind for five minutes in the last month. Doctors don't know what's going on with me. I've told them I'm pretty sure I have a CSF leak, but we can't find it. Just did a brain MRI waiting on the results for that, about to do a neck scan. Um, I only get up to go usually to the bathroom to take my kids to school, pick them up from school, and to do TikTok and Reels and do this and get up when I need to get up to do my Reels and my work. Um, it doesn't stop us, guys. We have to be able to push through these hard times because, again, it comes back to our why. Why are you doing this? We all get sick, and I get it. There's some things that we'll go through in life that are really hard for us, and we might need to take a day or two off of our business. That's completely fine. And all my team knows I love them to death and I'm going to support them no matter what they're going through. And I'm going to be there to listen to them and to talk to them and to get them through those hard times because I want to be their support system. But at the same time, we still need to run our business, guys. We still need to come back and 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 still do the things. We still need to stay consistent. I'm still posting. I'm still doing the reels. I don't feel good, but I'm still here. I'm still showing up because it's not about me. It's about everyone else on this Zoom right now. If I couldn't do this, then my team fails. Okay, so we all have got to push through. And I want you to watch this video. Um, It just... It was pretty cool, I thought. So hopefully, guys, you will like it. Let's see. Share sound. I want you to think of it in our business. Just And mind you, if you have any kids, please cover their ears. He says the F word a lot. <laughs> I apologize. So one bad thing about this video, but. He knocked my mom out the top of the stairs. I could see him coming down the stairs, just dragging her. And she was kind of lifeless. And that's when I got off the couch, scared to death, jumped on my father, and he beat the shit out of me. We never went to school hardly at all because we were bruised up. He also believed in just us working the family business. So, so going to school really didn't happen for me at all. Not only did I take it back, he also had a learning disability. I'll never forget in third grade, there was this teacher that was extremely rough on me. And at this time in my life, I did not need this. And she believed I needed to be in a special school because of my learning disability. And this is where I was talking about, people always talk about manage your expectations. This teacher managed my expectations. She saw I had a learning disability. She saw I was socially unable to survive in this world. She saw I was messed up. So she managed my expectations. She said, we need to put David Goggins in a special school. I came from hell. And when you come from hell not knowing how to fight, this is what happens to you. What happens to you is you become a fucked up kid that cannot survive in society. I'll never forget one time during a basketball game, there was this coach, Mr. Trout. He knew me when I was a kid in that school when I was in third grade getting set back. Mr. Trout always loved me. This white man loved the shit out of me. I don't know why he did. But he was my JV basketball coach my sophomore year. The visiting team was at our home stadium, it was at the end of the game, and the visiting team started chanting, I was the only black person in the whole daggone stadium. They started chanting, nigger, nigger, nigger. That's all I remember. At that time in my life, that's all I remember. But now at 42 years old, I can look back on that time with clear eyes and a clear mind and see what Mr. Trout did for me. 
He went in that locker room where I was crying and upset, and he cried with me. This white man cried with me, but at that time, I didn't see that. All I saw was red. I saw hate. This whole town hated me. Everybody's against me. My mind lost it. And for some reason, I couldn't sleep on my bed. And to this day, I don't know why the floor felt so comfortable. And at 22, 21 years old, I went from 175 pounds to 297 pounds. Fat, out of shape, insecure. I was everything everybody said I was going to be. That's what I was. And it makes you feel like shit. So I got a job spraying for cockroaches at nighttime. Not saying it's a bad job, but I didn't want to do it. So for about six months, I went around to your local eatery spraying for cockroaches. This one night I came home, the first thing I do, I walk in my living room, turn the TV on, first thing I do, and then walk back to, the, um, to take a shower. And I would listen to the TV as I was trying to take a shower. This day changed my life. It held me accountable for what I wasn't facing in life. They're going through Navy SEAL training. And I sat down, I, I came out of the shower and I sat down. Something brought me back to sit down and watch these guys go through hell. I saw a ton of them quitting, ringing the bell. Ringing the bell means you quit Navy SEAL training. I saw them putting their helmet down. This went on through the whole show. And it finally got to the very end. There was about 15 to 20 guys at the very end. And this one statement changed my life. They were all sitting there in their dress whites. And this CO, this command officer, stands up in front of these men. And he looked sharp, and he, I could tell he stood for something. And he said, we live in a world where mediocrity is often rewarded. These men up here detest mediocrity. When you hear a statement like that, it forces you to think about yourself. I wasn't even fucking mediocre. I wasn't anything. I was at the bottom of the barrel of life. I chose the four-lane highway for my life, the easy route, the route that has gas stations, the route that has fucking signs that say 20 miles to the next service stop, all this shit. I chose that route. Most of us choose the four lane highway. When I was born, there was also a shovel over here in the fucking corner. That's the, no one wants to go to the shovel. They want to choose the four lane fucking highway. That's the, that's the nice route. The shovel means you're gonna fucking hurt. The shovel means you're gonna suffer. The shovel means you're gonna hit rock a lot of time. And we all know what digging through rock is like. When you hit a fucking root, you gotta fucking get some more tools out. If I had no more tools, just a fucking shovel. I was choosing the four lane highway. This is when I decided to pick up that fucking shovel that we all decide not to take. I had to make a change in my life. So I said, you know what? I have to join the military. I went on a Navy SEAL training. Became the only person I believe in history to go through three Navy SEAL Hell Weeks in one year. I completed two of them. Hell Week is 130 hours of continuous training. You might get two hours of sleep. The first few weeks get you ready for this hard one week of training. I had to become obsessed. No matter what was in front of me, I had to figure out a way to overcome it. So when things hit you in life that you're afraid of or you're not good at, the first thing you're gonna say to yourself is, why am I here anyway? This isn't for me. The water's too cold. The sun's too hot. I'm getting up too early. Why am I doing this to myself? That's what the normal mind says. I had to start training my mind to think about how the fuck can I get through this? Not giving myself a way out. Never giving myself creating a wall around all the fucking ways out in my mind. I just slowly start to build this fucking wall so my mind knew this motherfucker is not going to give himself a way out of here. In my first hell week, I had a huge setback. I was broken. My legs were broken. I had double pneumonia. I got rolled back to day one, week one of Navy SEAL training. I got through that second hell week. During the second hell week, I actually broke my knee. I continued to limp around for a couple weeks. I couldn't make it anymore. Got rolled back to day one, week one. 
I'll never forget standing there in front of Captain Bowen. He was the CEO in charge of Navy SEAL training at the time. And he had no mercy on anybody. If he believed in managing your expectations, I wouldn't be here today. He challenged me again. I was challenged my whole life, not by the mindset of managing expectations, by exceeding expectations, not by managing them. I'm standing there with crutches. I'm sitting in his office. He looks at me, he goes, Goggins, this is your last time. We're gonna put you through Navy SEAL training. This will be your third hell week in one year. We're not gonna put you through a fourth. So this is your last time. I'm sitting there thinking, how am I gonna get through this? I'm, I'm badly jacked up. My legs are broken. My knee is messed up. And he goes, you have a couple of months to get better. A couple of months isn't gonna do it. I won't get healed up in a couple of months. But I realized I'm gonna get through this shit. I'm gonna find a way to get through it because why I put barriers in my mind. So my third hell week, I went in there with pretty much, I would put a black sock on first. I would get duct tape. And I duct taped my ankles all the way up to my calf every single morning. And then I put another black sock over it. And what that did, that prevented me from moving my ankle. So I didn't really, I, I wasn't flexing my shin as much. And I started running with just my hip flexors. In this hell week, it was a bad hell week. We had a guy die on Thursday morning of hell week. I went on to become a Navy SEAL. Greatness is not something that you meet once. It's something that you meet thousands of fucking times in your life. And you don't reach it if you're not constantly in constant fucking pursuit of fucking greatness. So if my mind were to say right now, I'm great, I just lost. We're gonna grow. We're not gonna triple down on our strengths. We're not gonna do that crap. We're gonna work on our weaknesses so we grow. We need friction to do that. Without friction, there's no growth. Without friction, there's confusion. Confusion is, David Goggins, how did you become who you are today? I put a bunch of fucking friction in my life and I grew. That's how I did it. You know how you get mentally tough? It's a lifestyle. Instead of hitting that fucking snooze button in the fucking morning and not making your bed, not cleaning your house, you don't hit the snooze button. You get up. You don't want to go run, you go run. You don't want to go swim, you go swim. You don't want to make your bed, you make your bed. You don't want to clean your house, you clean your house. You don't want to study, you fucking study. That's how you start to callous your mind. So that became my life. If you say you're gonna wake up at four o'clock in the fucking morning to go run, wake up at four o'clock and it's gonna suck. It's not gonna be fun. Do something that sucks every single day of your life. That's how you grow. Embrace the suck. So I wanted you to watch that. I know he says the F word a lot, but it, I put it towards our business, guys. Like, we all have those challenges. We all have those obstacles stopping us. But it's the building blocks that we're putting as caps on our own lives that are stopping us from being great. And everyone on this Zoom can be great if we just do the things. If we stay consistent, we do the job. Again, like Stephanie even posted on her own page, there's times for building, there's times for growing, there are times for weeding, but we, if as long as we stay consistent, we're going to see it, the, that happen. So I want you to know and think about what obstacles or blocks in your mind are you putting on yourselves that are you putting on yourselves? We all go through hard times. Yes, I have completely lost my Facebook, taken from me over 2,000 friends from it. I've had to go through two elbow surgeries, colon cancer removal, lymph node removal surgery, uh, my daughter's dad getting a restraining order against me right before Mother's Day because he didn't want to get in trouble with the courts. I lost her for two weeks before I got her back finally. And I had to go through that all while doing my business. It destroyed me when I lost my daughter for two weeks and all because he wanted to get out of getting in trouble because he took her early out of school and he never should have during my time. He got a restraining order to get out of it. But I didn't get my daughter during Mother's Day. 
I was broken, but I still posted. I still did the things because I knew that if I didn't, if I let my business go, I couldn't take care of my other three children. Remember what your why is and why we're doing this. Um, the path to success in this industry is paved with challenges, but each obstacle is an opportunity in disguise. Embrace the learning curve, overcome a rejection with resilience, build strong relationships, master time management, stay adaptable, cultivate a positive mindset, and leverage the power of your network by learning from others, collaborating to overcome challenges, because together we are stronger. I can tell you if I didn't have the girls that I do on my team that know when I'm getting down in the dumps to reach out and say, are you okay? Do you need anything? Do you need a leaning ear to be here for? Do you need us to listen to you and get it off your chest? And let me vent to them. Guess what? That made a big difference because I was able to come back. It was just me having to say it out loud sometimes. There might be people on your team that might be getting quiet for a reason, guys, because they might need that support system. They might need you to reach out to them and be that friend for them. No matter what we are all going through, you can embrace the suck and push through whether whatever it is that may be lying in your way. Working from your phone, grieving the loss of a loved one, but still sending your messages out because you can have because you can because you have others to take care of. Understanding that sometimes that we have things that are out of our control, but stressing about them isn't going to help us grow or achieve our goals. We all experience hardships in our lives that suck that sucks us um, out of the things that are more important in our lives. And we need to try, and when we try to rationalize what we're going through, remaining miserable, the stronger your feelings of discomfort will become. And the easier it will be to sacrifice these long-term goals that we aren't meeting. If you haven't developed mental toughness and you frequently find yourself ready to quit when things get hard, your body will willingly jump onto that bandwagon. But when we expect when we expect the suck and we know things are going to happen, which they do on a daily basis with most of us, especially in my life, it's a daily thing. Um, as long as I know that something bad is going to happen and I am expecting something bad, but I know that I can get past it. Guess what? My body embraces that and knows exactly what to do. So when that bad thing happens, I literally know, okay, self-development in my car. I'm going to turn on a podcast or I'm going to turn on a Christian, Christian, uh, music something I know exactly what to do now to get my mind right. Or if I get that no, where I, I mean, guys, I've been called the B word, the C word. I would never say that to any woman ever. And I've been called that and it broke me back then. But now I know how to fix that. I know that it's not a reflection of me. It's a reflection of them and what they're dealing with in their lives at this time. And that that no and that rejection and the, the your business sucks or that I'll never come back to your business, but I've seen it time and time again, women coming back, them, you know, coming back and being seeing what this can do in their lives, the blessings that this industry can have to help them and still embracing them, still loving them when they come back, because that's all we want. We want the best for others, right? So we've got to fake it until we make it sometimes. Until we learn to have that mental toughness, sometimes we got to um, take those circumstances that might be undesirable and position um, yourself to fake it till you make it. And learn. And, and as you do that, you're going to gain that mental toughness that you need that will build you as, and embrace those circumstances to eventually make it through it. And so I challenge you all to go today and break through, embrace the suck of whatever life is giving you or throwing your way and realize and just fake it until you make it. 
dive into self-development, whatever that might be, mental, social, physical, emotional, or literally sought podcasts, books, reaching out to a friend on your team, reaching out to a team member, seeing if they're okay, being there for others. And I promise you, life is going to happen for you. And I keep on telling Stephanie every time something else happens, she's like, oh my gosh, you need to write a book. And I'm like, eventually I probably will with everything I've been through in my life. She's like, I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, I don't know how you do it. You beat cancer too, woman. And I just know that God is good. Even though I'm not like a big Christian goer, I know he's there. I know there's a higher power and a higher being. And I believe in something else that that we're all here for a reason. We're all here for a reason. I, and I might not know what this reasoning is. I might not know why God's putting me through all these trials and tribulations, but I know it's for a reason. And later on down the road, he's going to show me why, or I'm going to find out why. <laughs> and so I love you all. And I hope that this brought you some joy, some happiness, and got some training that might you might have needed in your day. And I uh, wish you all the best. And whoever is going to green carpet, please come and say hello. I love meeting you all in person. Can't wait to hug you and love you. And I hope you have a great night, guys.